today on Light of the Word with Pastor Ray. Every place you've stepped that I've told you to step, every place that I've called you to go, I will be there. When you step in my obedience, you will have victory. But when you step out on your own, do your own things, that's not part of my promise to give you. Verse 13, Aiken, get up, sanctify the people, and say, sanctify yourself for tomorrow. There is an accursed thing in your midst, O Israel. You cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the accursed things from among you. Open your hearts to us, Lord, so we can know. As Joshua led the children of Israel into battle, they experienced many victories because they were obedient to God and His commands. They experienced a great defeat because a man named Achan disobeyed God and brought sin into the camp. It's been said that God doesn't bless mess, and the Lord won't allow you to experience His fullness of joy when you're allowing sin in your life. The moment Joshua removed the sin from the camp, God allowed victory for the children of Israel again. Well, let's join Pastor Ray in the book of Joshua, chapter 7, for today's edition of Light of the Word. Let me share this with you. The heart of a father, our heavenly father, any personal sin, anything regarding personal holiness will never be God's fault. It will always be your fault because God promises us spiritual victory in overcoming sins in our life and personal holiness. It will never be his fault, and we will never be able to say, it was you, if you would have done this, if you were there, personal holiness will always be on us. It will never be on God. And look what he says in verse 10. So the Lord said to Joshua, get up. Why do you lie thus on your face? I think possibly... Joshua has been praying all day because he went in there in the morning or early in the day. He went in before the Lord, and now it's later in the day. And finally now, God says, get up. I think Joshua could have been sat there and think, he, you ever have that? You, you, you sat there for 30 minutes and you realize, you know, actually, I think I was just talking to myself the whole time. And sometimes I think we have to make dedicated time, uh, double the dedicated time for prayer just because it takes the first half of it to break through the flesh. I'm sitting, I'm thinking about this, or my mind's wandering here. I'm really just talking to myself. And then I finally come into this place of Lord, and I come and I speak to the Lord, and then the Lord speaks. So many times I think it's just a one-way conversation. I'm speaking, I'm speaking, I'm speaking. Then when I finally realize, oh, it's a two-way conversation, then God speaks, then he Then he speaks. I'm like, oh, and here's Joshua. I think sometimes, guys and gals, you have to dedicate enough time for God to break through. We're just never going to have the five-minute drive-by. Well, I sat down. Did you pray about it? I did. Don't we always go, did you pray about it? Isn't that our question? Someone's, oh, I'm struggling with this. I got this thing going on. Did you pray about it? Yeah, I prayed about it. The question that would be great to ask, I don't ever have the guts to ask it, is how long? Oh, how long? Um, Well, I was walking between buildings at work, or, well, I was in the car uh, on my way to work, and, um, yeah, I know some people were cutting me off, and I'm trying to get over and stuff like that, but, yeah, yeah, we talk. I think there's this place, and what we see here with Joshua, he goes in before the Lord early, and then it's not until evening that God comes and speaks to him. I think we have to dedicate a time. You know what? I just have to sit here until I have this breakthrough and I hear from you. And in verse 11, here's what the Lord replies to him. Like, get up. Israel has sinned. 
And they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them, for they have even taken some of the accursed things and have both stolen and deceived, and they have also put it among their own stuff. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned turned their back before the enemies because they have become doomed to destruction. Neither will I be with you anymore unless you destroy the accursed things from among you. Here we see another one that the Lord speaks to us. Get up. There's a time to pray, and then there's a time to get into action. There's a time to pray. Lord, what is it? But when he says, here's what it is, it's a time to get up. It's a time to get in action. And he's saying, Joshua, we're done talking about this. Now, here's what I want you to go do. We got to go deal with this because you'll never have the flow of the spirit in your life. We're never going to have another step of victory in our life until you deal with this. And it's an interesting thing when you consider every step that you place your soul, I've given to you. They placed their soul in the AI, their foot in AI, but they lost. And what we see is it comes with this boundary Every place you've stepped that I've told you to step, every place that I've called you to go, I will be there. When you step in my obedience, you will have victory. But when you step out on your own and do your own things, that's not part of my promise to give you. In verse 13, Achan, get up, sanctify the people and say, sanctify yourself for tomorrow. There is an accursed thing in your midst, O Israel. You cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the accursed things from among you. Just so you know, Achan knows what's coming. Achan, Joshua's making an announcement. There's an accursed thing here in in our land, and tomorrow we're going to deal with it. How How well did Achan sleep? But here's the beauty of the heart of the father. I'm giving you all night to repent. I'm giving you all night to make a decision to turn. And he doesn't. And we'll see that as we continue on. But here's what we see. Sanctify yourself. We've seen this in chapter 3. Sanctify yourself. For tomorrow, we're going to see God do great things. Chapter 5, they come over to the Jordan before they come into Jericho. Sanctify yourself. Set yourself apart. And here we come to chapter 7 now. Sanctify yourself. Here's the key. And here's God's cleansing. Here's God's requirement for us to maintain and enjoy this wonderful spiritual blessings and the power of God moving in our life. And it's to sanctify yourself. Set yourself apart. Because to not be sanctified brings this quenching because sin quenches. We can grieve God, as we studied and talked about last week. We can grieve him to this place that he stops moving and he just waits. Now, it's interesting, when I was in Central America, they don't have all the things we have. And they were laying pipe for water, but they use actually bamboo. So they use these bamboos and they piece them together and they run them from the water source and it runs all the way through. But it's an interesting thing that I noticed uh, in that. Anybody ever see bamboo? You see how it like has weld marks every foot. It seems like it has a well, it's growth. And so as the, as the tree grows, that's, that's how it grows. And then it grows the next year. And that's almost how you can measure how old the, the bamboo is by the number of growth. So those little weld marks though, they actually have a film inside the bamboo it's a real thin film that comes with that growth mark it's enough of a film that the water can't flow through it so what they have to do for all they get all the bamboo and they make it all the same size because they're going to piece it together then they take a smaller stick piece of bamboo that will fit inside the diameter of that one And they run it through, and they break all this film as it runs through. And then once they break all this thin layer of film, then the the water can flow through. You know what that's called? What they actually call it? That little film that's inside the bamboo? They call it the heart. And that was just so interesting to me to hear them say, we have to break the heart before the water will flow. 
And I think we see a beautiful picture there as God's like, I got to break your heart. I got to break your heart of the things that break my heart. Because until your heart's broken over these things, until you come into this agreement with me that these things are wrong, I'll never be able to flow through you. And Christian, you'll never have that free flow. You'll never have the move of God in your life when we harbor any type of film, sin, covering that stops the work of God. And God has a beautiful antidote for us. It's 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And what God has here is we have this vertical and horizontal relationship with the Lord. The vertical is positionally, we're his children. That's signed, sealed, delivered. Once you receive Jesus Christ, you are a son and daughter. Done. But then he says to us, because I confess, you confess your sins, I want to forgive your sin. Ask me to be the Savior. I'm going to give you life and you'll be my children. But then he comes and he says later, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that's this horizontal. It's the relation this daily relationship that we have with the Lord, and he speaks to us, he says, man, your sin is causing problems. When Renee sins against me, not that I ever would. So when Renee sins, there's tension in our relationship. She's still my wife. We're still married. We still have the last name, and it's done. There's no change in this relationship that we have. We are husband and wife. But those sins, those things that we cause tension and grief in our relationship, not until we come together and one of us says, I was wrong. Confess means to agree. I agree with you what I did was wrong. I agree with you that I hurt you. And when we come to that place, regardless of what the grief was, we immediately find ourselves back into this perfect unity. We were always husband and wife, but there was this break in the flow of God's heart and and our hearts being one and flowing through us. And so the Lord says, come back to these things, sanctify yourself. And Achan has all night, all night. And he doesn't, he knows what's coming. It's already been spoken, a cursed things. He knows it's him. And he spends, and he still doesn't turn that night. Verse 14 through 18 In the morning, therefore, you shall be brought according to your tribes, and it shall be that the children which the Lord takes shall come according to families, and the family which the Lord takes shall come by household, and the household which the Lord takes shall come by man, by man. Verse 15, then it shall be that he who is taken with the accursed things shall be burned with fire, and he and all that he has because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord and because he has done a disgraceful thing in Israel. So Joshua rose early in the morning and brought the Israel by tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken. He brought the clan of Judah, and he took the family of Zerite. So he's gone all the way through 12 tribes, and now he's down to Judah. And he took the family of the Zerites, and he brought the family. Now he's gone through all families. He's down to this, just this one family lineage. And he brought the family of the Zerites by man, and Zebedee was taken. Now he's getting down into dads and granddads. Then he brought his household man by man, and Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, and the tribe of Judah was taken. Why did Achan put them through that? Why would he allow them to have to go through all of this? Two million, maybe even three million was the size of the children of Israel. And Achan makes them all go through this. He makes them all have to come through these things. He has all night to repent. But we know Hebrews 4.13, and there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him whom we must give an account. David Speaking of this antidote, speaking of breaking the heart, speaking of allowing God to just work with us and speak with us and break through us. Search me, O God, Psalm 139, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the ways of everlasting. Nothing's hidden in his sight. Why we would hide it. Oh, God, just the father just says, bring it to me. But he's, you know what? God's allowing this whole camp to see this because he wants to say, I'm serious about this. 
it will quench your life. It will quench what's happening in your marriage. It will quench how you're raising and ministering to your children. It will quench the ministry within your church. I'm serious about this, and I'll bring everybody that you can see. This is how serious I am about this sin and what it will do to the flow of my spirit through your life. We see the correlation story in Acts chapter 5 with Ananias and Sapphira lying before the Holy Spirit, and God shows them, this is how serious I am. So he takes them, presenting tribes, presenting families, presenting the 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 subfamilies then presenting man and then going through all these things. He's putting his finger on, he's putting his fingers on and, and he takes us through all these things. And Achan's name actually means trouble. And they come to the one trouble and God says, here's the one who's trouble. How fitting that his name and watch what God does. We see what God, he's ruthless. He's ruthless with this sin. Christian, we must be ruthless with the sins in our life because you know what? Sin is ruthless with us. Sin will give no favor, and sin will give no lighthearted moves. The sin will consume us, and the sin wants to do one thing, rob, steal, kill, and destroy. So we must be ruthless with it. In verse 19 through 21, Now Joshua said to Achan, My son, I beg you, give glory to the Lord God of Israel. Make confession to him and tell me now, what have you done? Do not hide it from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and this is what I have done. When I saw the, among the spoils a beautiful Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold and 50 shekels, I coveted them and took them, and they are hidden in the earth and in the midst of my tent where the silver is underneath of it. Just calculating that into today's modern numbers, this way it works out to about five pounds of silver, and 11 pounds of gold. At today's numbers, uh, that's about $1,500 in silver and $200,000 in gold. That Babylonian garment from um, historical writings, it was, uh, they said it was like woven with gold threads. Nothing to be seen. Just, it was an amazing thing. And so you have this extreme wealth of the silver and the gold. And I look at the Babylonian garment like, Air Jordans. Anybody got kids who want Air Jordans? You'd rather get a shekel. You'd rather go get this gold. That's how much these Air Jordans are costing. And so he sees these things. And do you notice the three things? Because they're always the same three things. I saw it, I coveted it, and I took it. Always the same work. Always the same thing in our heart. I see something, oh, I want it, I covet. Then the decision comes, seeing isn't the sin, but the coveting part is what needs to be battled because it will determine, will I take it? And we know this. If you have to hide it, if there's anything we're doing, if there's anything you're doing in your life and you hide it, you know it's wrong. He knew it's wrong. He's got to go, and he's going to bury it in the bottom of his tent. We just know if you got to hide it, it's wrong. And that's the same for us. But last week... Here's your full, here's your guaranteed way to overcome covetousness. It's the presence of the Lord. Just living and dwelling in his presence. Last week's message was how to have that continual presence of the Lord, how to continually be filled and supplied and enjoying his presence as we studied last week, Ephesians chapter 5. And look at what the outcome is when we read Ephesians 5. I'll start with Galatians 5.16. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Here's walking in the Spirit, the continual supplying of the Spirit. Ephesians 5, starting in verse 15. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, not, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. The present The present tense is continually be filled. We studied that last week, how to become continually filled with the Holy Spirit. The tape and the notes are online. But look what the outcome is when you are. 
speaking to one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Oh, giving thanks for all things to God, the Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, submitting to one another in the fear of God. When we're filled, and that's what the beauty of our Tuesday night prayer is. We come here and we just get to take a time and we worship the Lord. We call it worship-based prayer. We don't do a prayer list where everybody sits around and says, here's my prayer list. We come and we open up a word and we're just looking at the beauty of God and his awesomeness. We're like, you're an amazing God. You're an awesome God. We give opportunity for people who have a word on their heart and they read and maybe they read a passage like this or someone reads another passage. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for the Lord is good. And we just lift ourselves and we're speaking to one another in songs and spiritual songs. And we do that after service. We do it before service here as a church. And here's what's going to happen. As we do these things, the presence of God is just manifested even greater. And as his presence is manifested in his, in his, and he's on our heart and we're singing of him and we're speaking of him, you know, when we see these things, we're like, no, no thanks. I know this will quench what God's doing. And I love what I got right now. The sweetness of this is too great to want to give it up for a pair of Air Jordans, some lousy pieces of gold and silver and these type of things. But we do see in this passage seven, seven things where power is lost. Power is lost when they go back upon, a person goes back upon their separation to him. Remember, Chapter 3, 5, 7, here they are. Achan had all night to separate and come, come back to the separation that he had committed to, and he doesn't. Power is lost through the incoming of sin. That's obvious. We've discussed that. Power is lost through self-indulgence. Achan wants more. I covet it. I see. I want more. It's never enough. Power is lost for greed through money. And sometimes we don't even recognize the greed, but we got more, more, I need more. And we see that in Achan. I got to have more. I'd rather lose this move of God and have these things. Power is lost through pride, like the Babylonian garment. But I see a power is lost through, through Joshua. I got this. I got this. I don't need to go and get everybody. We're good in the flesh. We can take this. I am the, the great commander. Power is lost through the neglect of prayer. Oh, if Joshua would have only fell on the face of the Lord before the battle of Ai, rather than after, God would have spoke to him. These things have to go. And power is lost through the neglect of the word, because any time we don't take God at his word as he had spoken, and that's what Joshua, he deviated from it, we'll lose power. And so closing out in verse 22 and 23, Again, be ruthless. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran to the tent, and there it was hidden in his tent with the silver under it. And they took, took them from the midst of the tent, brought them to Joshua and to all the children of Israel, and laid them out before the Lord. And that's what we need to do. Just lay it out. Lord, deal with it. I want you to utterly destroy it. Verse 24 to 26. Then Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, the silver, the garments, the wedge of gold, his sons... His daughters, his oxen, his donkey, his sheep, his tent, and all that he had. And they brought them to the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, why have you troubled us? The Lord will trouble you this day. So all Israel stoned him with stones, and they burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. Then they raised over them a great heap of stones still there to this day, so that the Lord turned from their fear, from the fierceness of his anger therefore the name of the place has been called the valley of acre we choose our sin that's our free will we just never get to choose our consequences of the sin you have made the way for us to know you a path that's straight and bright The book of Joshua continues the story of Israel, joining them as they prepare to finally enter the land God promised them. Their trials were far from over, however. Though the land had been given to them, the current inhabitants needed to be driven out. The Israelites needed to continue to lean on God for protection and guidance, and for a conclusion to this chapter of their story. There was no way they could accomplish complete victory on their own even though they tried at times. 
Once they let go and allowed God to move, though, great things happened, and they were reminded again of the faithfulness of their Creator. We're so glad you joined us today for Pastor Ray's study in the book of Joshua on Light of the Word. If you'd like to hear more teachings from this study, you can do so by visiting ccaac.org. We'd love to stay in touch with you, too. So don't forget to sign up for our weekly newsletter while you're there. Do you have a prayer request you'd like to share with us? Or do you have any questions? If so, please take a moment to email us at mail at ccaac.org or give us a call at 443-995-3282. That's 443-995-3282. Thanks for listening today to Light of the Word, illuminating the heart of God. You have made